Rabbi Akiva, it says, is, is grabbed by the Romans and they start taking off his skin with, uh, with metal cones. Amrulo Talmidav, so some of his students came to him and he said, Adkan. They think, you know, we can't stand this. How can this be happening? Rabbi Akiva, the Romans have control over you. They're going to kill you by, by combing your skin off. Amar lahem, so Rabbi Akiva says to them, he says in the Talmud, Kol yamai haiti mitztair al pasuk ze. It says in the Kriyat Shema, we say, Bechol levavcha, that a person needs to have, it says, love for the Creator, even if He takes your soul. And He says, in all of my life, this verse, it says, caused me pain, Rabbi Akiva said. He says, and now that I have the opportunity to live out this verse, won't I grab this opportunity? And it says, he said, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. He said the Shema Yisrael, and then when he said the word Echad, his soul left him. How do we understand the story? So, the, the Rabbi Israel of, of, of Rizion explains that what is the Shema Yisrael? That ultimately, as the Zohar explains, when we say the Shema, we're supposed to achieve a level of unification with the light of the Creator. Right? revealed that the whole purpose of all of our spiritual work is Bikut, complete union with the light of the Creator. When in the day is this supposed to be achieved? In the Shema. When we say the Shema in the morning, when we say the Shema in the evening, we're supposed to come to a level of Bikut, of complete unification of our soul with the, with the light of the Creator. Of course, most of us don't feel this, most of us don't reach this, because the only way, as Rav Ashlag makes very clear, the only way we can achieve this divikut, this unification, is by a constant removal of our desire to receive for the self alone. If our lives really are around this purpose, which is to constantly, day after day, week after week, remove our desire to receive for the self alone, and when we come to the Kriyat Shema, we can actually achieve, or at least begin to feel the taste of that divikut, of that unification. Rabbi Akiva achieved this level. Every day, in the morning and at night, when Rabbi Akiva said, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Echad Shem Echad, when he made that connection, he achieved complete divikut, complete unification with the light of the Creator. But it said, he came to the point where his soul wanted to leave the body. Because he had achieved complete unification. He had no, his soul had no, his, he had no desire to remain in the, the body. His soul had no desire to stay in the body. But he knew they still had work in this world, Rabbi Akiva did. So every day he comes to Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad, that powerful connection, his soul achieves the Vikut with the light of the Creator. It, it's now 99% bound to the light. And he stops it. He says, no, 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 I can't allow myself to feel the complete unification. Because if I do that, my soul leaves my body. He grabs it back into the body. Every day, this was a, the Shema was a painful process for Rabbi Akiva. He says, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokein Hashem Echad. His soul achieves 99% unification. He wants to go that last step of complete unification with the light of the Creator, complete removal from attachment to the body. He says, no, I can't. I can't. There's still work for me to do in this world. I have to stop it. Every day, every morning, every evening that Rabbi Akiva said, the Shema Yisrael, his soul achieved 99% unification, wanting to go that last 1%, and he, with pain, Rabbi Akiva has to stop it. Therefore, it says in the, in the Gemara that Rabbi Akiva said, every day I have pain, needs ta'arti. Why? Because his soul wanted to leave his body, because he was at that level where the Shema achieved its purpose, which was its complete unification with the light of the Creator. But then he knew that he still had worked in this world, and he had to stop it. But when he saw the Romans were going to finish off his body anyway, he said, I don't have to stop it anymore. I don't have to cause myself that pain of stopping the unification. I can allow my soul to completely reunite with the light of the Creator, and therefore it's anishmato bechad. Therefore, his soul, it says, left in echad because he didn't stop it anymore. The Romans, of course, didn't kill Rabbi Akiva. He allowed his soul to leave his body. This, of course, is the ultimate purpose of all of our spiritual work: to achieve the level of vikut to achieve a level of complete unification with the light of the Creator.
Lora Chaim, Rabbi Chaim ben Atar explains that this is what Nadav and Avihu achieved. It says, and this, again, as we read, as we, as we connect to the story of Rabbi Akiva, as we now connect to um, Lora Chaim's explanation of the, the death of Nadav and Avihu, we are awakening this light within ourselves. Lora Chaim writes, it says, how did they die when they came close to the Creator? That they brought their souls to the light of the Creator with so much love. And that's how their soul left their body. When it says, for instance, about Miriam, it says about Aaron that they died, what's called mitat neshika, which means that they died, it's called the, the Creator kissed them and their soul left the body. It's the same as we spoke about Rabbi Akiva, that there is this process that the tzaddikim go through, and again, the process that we're all hopefully striving towards, where our body, our connection to our body is not a selfish one, but it's, we come to the point where we have complete dominion over death, complete dominion over the, the angel of death. He can't touch us. But we decide, a person decides, like Rav Ashla decided, like Rabbi Shimon decided, you know what, I think I've done enough here, let me go and enjoy myself. That's what mitat neshikah means. That's what it means when uh, a righteous person uh, leaves this world. The difference, he says, sheafreshu sheatzadikim aneshikah mitkarevet lahem. The difference is that for, when it says about Aaron, Aaron, about Miriam, for instance, that they died in this way, it's that the Creator, the creator came and said to them, look, it's time. You've done enough in this, in this world. Do you want to come on? Do you want to achieve complete vikut? And they said, you know what? If you say so, we'll come close. But Nadav and Avihu, it really wasn't their time. It really wasn't, you know, the time for their, they had, they had more work to do, but they said, you know what? No. Nah. We want to go to the Vikut right now. And read this, and these words are so, again, they're so beautiful and again, powerful. But he says, They became so overwhelmed with love, with connection to the light of the Creator. They didn't, like Rabbi Akiva did for most of his life, they didn't stop themselves from achieving this unification. And he says, and he explains the different levels of love, of pleasure they, they achieved. They did not stop themselves from connection, the dvekut, this unification, ni'imut, the sweetness, arevut, yedidut, chavivut, chashikut, metikut, all different levels of, 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 of sweetness, of pleasure, of light. Until their soul left their body. What the Davin Avihu were experiencing was a real, the only real thing in this world, a real connection to the light of the Creator. And they felt it, they felt it, they felt another level, another level, another level. And they said, you know what? This is too good for us to have to go back to our bodies. And they just said, let go. And their soul left their body. Now, from some of this, this might be sort of a, an idea that's either scary or beyond us, but this is the gift of the Shabbat. All of us hopefully have on some level, and you know, for most of us it's probably not as real as it should be. This is the purpose of our lives, the Vikut. We're supposed to come to the level of Rabbi Akiva where we can sort of, you know, um, you know stop it. You know, we really, we achieve 100% of but we say, you know what, today, there's still some more work for me to do. I'll, I'll go 99% to the Vikut and, and, and scale it back and send my soul back to my body. But this Vikut, that the Raven of Yehu, this, and again, I'll read these words, because these words are going to awaken this connection within us. Dvekut, Neimut, Arevut, Yedidut, Chavivut, Chashikut, Metikut, Ad Klot Nafshotam Mehem. This is what we are meant to achieve. And this is the light that is revealed in the Shabbat. This perfection of the Vikut, this perfection of the unification of our soul with the light of the Creator is revealed to us on the Shabbat through the work of Nadav and Avihu. Their death clearly is not 
death that most people experience, which is, unfortunately for most people, a culmination of a life of desire to receive for the self alone that inevitably leads to the running away of a person's soul from their body. That's what most death is about. This death is not like that. This is Nishika, this is a kiss of the Creator, where they said, you know what, this is so, this is it, which it is, right? that's the purpose of our lives, let's let go. Let's achieve complete unification now. And that is the overwhelming light is revealed on this Shabbat. Complete unification with the light of the Creator. Through the work of Rabbi Akiva, through the work of Nadav and Avihu, our soul can taste, can taste from that. And this Shabbat is also revealed the Ktoret. The Ktoret is literally the incense that is spoken about as brought on Yom Kippur into the Holy of Holies. The Zohar says that Eliyahu Anavi, well, first, the Talmud tells us that the angel of death, the Malach HaMavet, gave to Moshe, gave to Moses the gift of the Ktoret. It says that when um, Moshe, when Moses went up to the, to the heavens, all the angels gave him some gifts. When he came, when Moshe, when Moses went up to receive the, the Luchot, the light of the Torah, the tablets, and all the angels gave him a gift. And the angel of death also gave Moshe a gift. The gift that he gave him was the Ketoret, was the secret, the light of the incense. The Zohar says, Eliyahu Navi reveals to us that when there's a plague in the world, the Ketoret is able, has the power to remove that to remove that, um, that plague, that death. The Zohar explains that the word Ketoret comes from the word Hitkashut, bonding, Yivakut. Why is the Ketoret revealed in the Shabbat? Because it, it signifies, it is, the light of complete unification with the light of the Creator. When we become completely unified with the light of the Creator, there's no death. So the Ketoret was the physical manifestation of the work of Nadav and Avihu. The Zohar teaches us that when we repeat, when we say the words of the Ketoret, we connect to that light that Nadav and Avihu reveal. So, to understand the, the way this works, is that until, and that's why again, it's a, this, go, this has so much depth and beauty to it, the, the Prit Tzaddik explains, we, you read the, the beginning of this week's portion, the Creator speaks to Moshe, and He reveals to him, after the death of Aaron, Again, almost a coincidence why it's almost like it happened that God revealed himself to Moses after the, the death of the children of Aaron. And he tells him the whole Masek, the whole work of the bringing of the incense. And he says, the Prit Sadiq explains, God didn't speak to Moshe. It wasn't words. But that Moshe, after the death of Nadav and Aviyu, suddenly started feeling something. Because of the work that they did, Moshe was filled with this prophecy of the work of the Torah, of the bringing of the incense. Because it was only, if not for the death of this unbelievable awakening of the Vekut, of unification of the souls in Ndav and Yehu, with the light of the Creator, we would not have merited the light of the Torah. We could have brought incense all day and all night, but the, the light of the secret of what the incense can do, what the Torah can do, would not have been revealed in our world. And therefore, after the death of the two children of Aaron, meaning after Nadav and Avihu did this unbelievable work of the Vekut, of unification with the light of the Creator, they brought down and manifested in our world a physical manifestation of a bridge to that light of the Vekut, and that is the Ketoret. That's why we say the Ketoret every day, and that's why it is the gift that the angel of death gave to Moshe, which was manifest by Nadav and Avihu. And he's telling him, listen, this is the way you can awaken a connection for the entire world to that ultimate level of unification. And when that unification is brought down into this world, it's Bila Hamavid Anetzach, or at least able to stop a Magifa, at least able to stop a plague. And that's what the, the power of the Torah is, the power of the revelation of the Torah, which could, which could only have been revealed because of the work of Nadav and Avim. And therefore, again, it's not a coincidence, obviously, with all that's happening in the world, with what they call the swine flu, that it's happening during this week when the work of Nadav and Avihu is reawakened in our world and the secret and the light of the Torah is reawakened in our world. This Shabbat we all have a tremendous responsibility, ability but also tremendous responsibility to reveal again the light of the Torah in the world. If we, as we, connect again to the light of the Divekut, the unification that Rabbi Akiva, that Nadav and Avihu revealed in our world, 
and therefore are able to awaken the true light that exists within the Ketoret, we're able to, as the angel of death told Moses, as Eliyahu Navi revealed in the Zohar, remove the power of the death of this plague. So, no coincidences. And this is the light that we have to, we have to awaken on the Shabbat. And so again, it's not so much a Shabbat of understanding. It's an overwhelming Shabbat. It's a Shabbat that is overwhelmed with love. It is a Shabbat that's overwhelmed with joy. It is a Shabbat that's overwhelmed with liquid. And it continues. Towards the, in Achimot it says, the Creator says, the Creator says, you should follow the spiritual path. If you do this, you will achieve life. The Ramban, and again it's a coincidence that the Ramban reveals this on this Shabbat, but he was awakened by the light of the Shabbat to reveal this here. He says, Da, you should know, and as we say these words, we awaken this light for ourselves and the world. The Ramban reveals, the level of life that one has and the level of life that one reveals through the spiritual work that he does is depending on where he's at. And he goes on to different levels. There are certain people who do it because they want to um, uh, have uh, um, blessings in this world. The people who do it who want to have blessings in the next world. He explains that each person, depending on where his consciousness is as he's doing the spiritual work, that's the type of life he can draw. It says that a person lives through the spiritual work. But life has a whole, there's a whole gamut of life that one can draw from the work of the spiritual work. And no, not one person's life is like the other person's life. Not the life that each one of us draws is unique, depending on how we do it and how we're connected and where our consciousness is and what type of preparation we have for the spiritual work. The ultimate level, he says, those who call machshevatam bekavanatam beboram bilvad, whose spiritual work, whose focus is only, as Rav Ashag reveals to us, as Ndavan who achieved, as Rabbi Akiva achieved, is only about connecting to the light of the Creator. Ke'inyan be'eliyahu, as Eliyahu and Navi, as Elijah the Prophet, bihidabek nafsham b'ashem hanechbad, that we can and are meant to achieve this complete unification with the light of the Creator. Yichyu la'ad, one can and needs to merit eternal life, begufam u'benafsham, with their body and with their soul. Kanir'e bakatu ve'eliyahu, as it says about the Avi, that not only as with Nadav and Avihu, their body didn't survive, they didn't want it, but Eliyahu and Avi, he kept his body and his soul together. And we know that Chanoch, from the time of Bereshit, he also achieved this life that his body and soul remained intact forever. Therefore, throughout the Torah, it talks about life. If you do this, you can achieve life. Each person, depending on the type of spiritual work, the focus of his spiritual work, the, the, the purity of his spiritual work, the purity of his focus, can achieve different levels of life from the spiritual work. Ultimately, and this is revealed in the Shabbat, we are meant to come to the point where our body and soul remains forever because we have achieved complete, complete unification. So the Ramban reveals to us again that this Shabbat isn't just about the Vekut, isn't just about the Ketoret, isn't just about bringing down into this world an element of, 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 of removal of death, but that ultimately we are meant to and can and is revealed to us the seed of it on this Shabbat. This is the Shabbat of immortality where physical immortality, that Eliyahu and Abi, that Elijah the Prophet achieved, that Hanoch achieved, can and is meant to come down to this world. When it says in this week's reading, Vechai Bahim, if you do the spiritual work, you will live. Ultimately, that means that we can and are meant to come to a point where like Eliyahu and Abi and like Hanoch, we achieve complete unification of our body and soul in the life of the Creator. And that level, once achieved, achieves eternal life.
So again, this light is revealed on this Shabbat for ourselves and for the world. And the last thing I want to share, because again, this is about connection. This is about elevation of our consciousness, not about understanding. The normally I know I shared this last week, but last year, but this is again just so powerful, not just on the level of understanding, but on the level of revelation. Because we need as much assistance as we can. We have the assistance now of Rabbi Akiva, we have the assistance of the Daven Avihu, we have the assistance of the Torah, we have the assistance of the Ramban. Now we have the assistance of the of uh, the normally Melech, Ibn Melech Melejansk. And this is the beauty, because the, this week's portion begins with the words Acharei Mot, after the death of the two sons of Aaron. A sad story. Two people died. I'm not going to read the whole thing, and I recommend those of you who have it to read the whole explanation from the Noam Elimelech. I'll just read a part of it. Bezeu Acharei Mot. What does it mean, those words, after the death? Rotzel Omar, it means Sheyesh Koach Biyad HaTzadik Sheyeh Acharei Mot that a righteous person, we know that the Nomad Melech is referring to all of us when he says a righteous person, we have the power to be after death. Klomar, meaning, levatel hamita, to annul, to finish off death. Kimo she'omrim b'nei adam al davar ha'nitbatel, omrim she'kvar achar ha'davar ha'u. Right? Uh, when, when a person finishes a certain process, when he's finished with something, we say, I'm after that, right? Like, a person has like a, a test, he says, oh, I, I'm, I'm past the test. Right, I'm, I'm, that's behind me. Acharei mot, the Noam Elimelech is revealing to us, means that we are meant, and this is the light that is revealed in the Shabbat, to be acharei mot, to be past death, meaning to leave death behind. The Mara Katuv, al yidei ma, al yidei davar ma yuchal atzadik levatel, how can we come to this level of acharei mot? So now, because it's so beautiful, now acharei mot doesn't mean, isn't a sad story after the death of the two children of Aaron, but rather it is acharei mot. It is that on this Shabbat is revealed to us the ability to be past death, to be beyond death. It's the only Shabbat of the year whose name, whose name is acharei mot. The name of this Shabbat is after death because it is revealed to us to be beyond death. How do we achieve this? Bekorvatam ifneashe. To the level of unification, of closeness to the light of the Creator. It's simple, right? It's simple. It's not, but this is everything. Perush, through our elevation in the supernal worlds, we achieve the level of Acharemot, of being after death. That is the light of the Shabbat. That is why it says that the friends were filled with so much joy when he came to the Shabbat, because this is it. This is the Shabbat of everything. This is the Shabbat of Acharimut. This is the Shabbat when it is revealed to us and to the world, the level of being after death, being past death. And again, as we said, it's not a coincidence that all, all that is happening in the world is happening as we come towards the Shabbat of Acharimut and Kedoshim because we have a tremendous responsibility. We have a tremendous responsibility on the Shabbat, the Shabbat of Nadav and Avihu, the Shabbat of Rebbe Akiva, the Shabbat of Eliyahu and Chanoch, the Shabbat of Ramban, the Shabbat of um, Acharimot, the Shabbat of the Ktoret. All of these elements coincide on this Shabbat to bring to us, to assist us in bringing this light to the world. It's a Shabbat, again, as we said, not a Shabbat of understanding, but a Shabbat of, of overwhelming light, overwhelming joy, overwhelming love. And therefore, we have a tremendous responsibility on the Shabbat, the Shabbat of the Torah, to bring down that light into this world, to reawaken the secret of the Torah, the secret of Achimot, of being past death, beyond death. Shabbat Shalom.